All right, enough optimism about the offense. We've been talking about the offense, 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 how good it's going to be, getting on the hype train for the offense. What about the other side of the ball? You get a little concerned over there? Well, I've got three key players for you who need to step up for Pitt's defense to be good this season. We'll talk about it on today's Morning Pit on YouTube.com slash Pantelaircom. All right, it's Thursday here on the Morning Pit on YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com. I'm Chris Peak from PantherLair.com, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. Somebody said in the comments the other day that I say too many URLs, but I'm not going to stop saying any of them because guess what? That's what we're here to do, to get you to go check out the website. If you want the most comprehensive source of Pitt Sports news on the internet, the best coverage you're going to find of Pitt Sports, the place to do it is right there at Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. Dot com. We've got all the coverage from training camp. I mean, you can see all the headlines up there and eight things from camp yesterday. Videos and slideshows and practice reports and interviews and all those kinds of things. It's all right there at pantherlair.com and the message boards where everybody's talking about everything going on in the world of pit sports. Panther-lair.com. I think it's the best online community of pit fans you're going to find. So go check it out. Panther-lair.com. And our video... Our video wing right here at youtube.com slash pantalaircom where we put all of our video content. And there's a whole lot of it. I mean, you can see the stuff that we got up there right now. We've got video interview with Wes Durham and Mark Rick from the uh, ACC Network is on there. Uh, Randy Bates' video is on there. We had a nice interview with Frank Signetti um, on Tuesday that was on uh, on right here on youtube.com slash pantherlaircom pat narduzzi's daily practice updates we got video from practice yesterday with the quarterbacks a lot of work for the quarterbacks throwing to the receivers and the running backs and the tight ends there's a lot of video content a lot pit a lot of pit video content on this youtube page right here youtube.com slash pantherlaircom so do what we always ask you to do like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com slash pantherlaircom and that way you'll never miss any of our exclusive pit video content whether it's these daily morning pit videos Monday through Friday that we put out, if it's our live show like we did last night at 8.30 p.m., the live Panther Lair show with me and Jim Hammett talking about pit sports, or it's all this stuff we've got from camp, these video uh, interviews and practice highlights and Narduzzi press conferences and all those things, there's a lot of video content to dig into there. You want to make sure you don't miss any of it. And so if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will be tuned in. Of course, you can always uh, once you're subscribed, you can turn on notifications. So you can alert sent to your phone whenever we post new content or we go live, which is going to come in handy once the games start, when we begin having our post-game shows, which are always a lot of fun here. Um, once we start the post-game shows, you're going to want to make sure you are tuned in for it. Uh, and we're never always exactly sure what time those are going to begin. So if you turn on your notifications, if you subscribe to youtube.com slash pantalaircom and you turn on your notifications, you will be you'll get a notif you'll get an alert whenever we go live. So you won't miss anything we do right here. So do that. Like this video and subscribe. All right. So yesterday, hype train left the station for Pitt's offense. I tried to pull back on it, had a lot of conversations with people in the aftermath of that video getting published. Uh saying I was either too bullish or not bullish enough for just observing the fact that I was bullish in the first place but inevitably there's always a flip side that comes to that comes with that and and some of the uh, optimism we expressed about Pitt's offense was tied to how the unit performed in um, the scrimmage on Saturday and when Panarduzzi and the players and coaches talked about completing a lot of deep passes and the offense ultimately having a good day um, not turning the ball over much. I think only one turnover from the first and second team offensive units. A lot of deep passes completed and generally a successful day for Phil Dracovic and the rest of those guys. But the flip side in training camp or spring camp or you know anytime you have one of these scrimmages, the flip side is if one side does well, that means the other side didn't. And, and you can have scrimmages that I think are pretty balanced, that each side makes plays and all that. But but if you have, you know, generally speaking, somebody's going to succeed and somebody's going to fail. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And it seems like Saturday's scrimmage was a win for the offense and a loss for the defense. And it wasn't just exclusively because of that that the optimism started to grow. It's also different things we've been hearing about this team and hearing about these players through training camp uh, that, that has sort of, Cause that hype train to, to start picking up steam or picking up speed, I guess. 
um, using its steam to pick up speed. I don't know. I lose. I, <laughs> I, I, I get lost in the details of how trains work. Um, but it's leaving the station. Um, and as we talked more and more about that, there was uh, naturally sort of an equal and opposite reaction on the message boards and on Twitter of, oh man, does this mean the defense is not good? And there's been a lingering concern about the defense really throughout the offseason. And it's largely due to the number of players they're having to replace. Six open starting jobs. If you look at uh, you know two starting defensive ends, one starting defensive tackle, a middle linebacker, and two safeties. And, you know... Not just any six players, but you know, an All American uh, in Kalaja Kansi, a first team All ACC selection in Servassier Dennis, and and two guys in safety in Brandon Hill and Eric Hallett, who were really good for the last two years, a big part of the ACC championship team and a big part of the success that Pitt had on defense last year, and replacing all of them, and. It's not going to be easy. And we've talked about the replacements and we've talked about how they're going to go about doing this and what the coaches have to do and who they're going to count on. We've talked about all these things throughout the off season. So it's nothing new, but as we move through the third week of training camp, which is where Pitt is right now, they're past the halfway point. Um, really they'll finish out this week and then they'll have practices, you know, the first few days of next week. I think the media is going to be down there for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know if they're practicing on Monday, if they're taking Monday off again, but then Friday's, you know, that's, I think Friday is the kickoff luncheon, right? And then you start into, there's a kickoff luncheon the following Friday. I, I forget exactly, but I mean, that's pretty much the end of training camp is next week. So as we move past the halfway point, we're in the third week of camp, heading toward the final week. Uh, you know, you want to see signs and you want to hear indications that the defense is, is making progress. And the positions that concern you the most, I think, are the safety spots. Those are the two big ones that, uh, you know, I, I think really stand out. At linebacker, yes, you lost Servassier Dennis, but you've got, uh, you know, Shane Simon, who played a lot last year, ready to step in at that middle linebacker position. Um, at defensive end, uh, along the defensive line, I mean, Kalijah Kansi produced at a really high level, a level that the defensive tackles probably won't produce this year. You know, it, I think it's going to be, I don't want to say a down year for the defensive tackles. I think it's going to be more of a normal year for defensive tackles in, in Pitt's 4-3 defensive scheme. I mean, yeah, we've said it a lot of times. The playmaking defensive tackle, the pass-rushing defensive tackle who puts up double-digit tackles for loss in a bunch of sacks is, is the exception, not the norm, even though it's happened around here a bunch of times. And I think it'll happen again in the future, just not necessarily this year, and that's okay. A defensive end where they're replacing Haba Baldonado and Deslin Alexander and John Morgan. All three of those guys produce at a lower level, I think, than was expected this past season. But I think they've, they've recruited well and they've got talented players there. The biggest question marks are at safety. And not necessarily because there are questions about those individual players uh, or and their talent or their experience. Although, certainly, they don't have a ton of experience, even though most of them played in the Sun Bowl and occasionally on, at different points last season. Um a lot of the questions tie back to just how difficult those positions are to play. I asked Pat Narduzzi yesterday and Randy Bates yesterday about the challenge of playing safety in this defense, of playing field safety in particular, but safety positions overall. And, and there are a lot of unforgiving positions in this defense. Cornerback is certainly one of them. We know that. I, I think if you can make it through four or five years of college football playing cornerback in this defensive scheme and not wanting to quit football – you know, you're probably pretty good, and I think that's the reason. A lot of, I think that's part of the reason a lot of these guys end up getting drafted and playing in the NFL is they they're not going to play in anything that is more demanding. They're not going to play in a defensive scheme that's more demanding than the one they played in in college, and so that's certainly a challenging position. The star linebacker has a lot on his plate. That's a challenging position, but I'm not sure if anything's more challenging than those two safety positions, the field safety and the boundary safety, both have a lot going on randy bates said it you know they're the quarterbacks of the defense and they're responsible for making the checks and setting the coverages and when they change coverage mid-drive i mean the, the safeties have to be on top of all of that and that's difficult and, and i think it's difficult for guys who have been around for a couple of years and it's even more difficult for guys who are starting for the first time which is going to be the case this year even if you know a, a javon mcintyre or pj o'brien you know saw playing time in the past this is going to be their first time really in the spotlight for a full season. And so that, to me, is one of the biggest 
that that to me is not one of the biggest areas to watch. That is the area to watch. That's the 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 position we're circling and the area that we're most concerned about. I think when you look at Pitt's defense, and not necessarily, you know, I've, I've said this a bunch of times. They, I I don't think they're going to be bad all year. I don't know if they're going to be. I don't think they're going to be bad at all. But I don't think they're going to struggle all season. But I think it could be a slow start. I think there could be some growing pains, particularly in the early weeks. You just hope that a one, it doesn't cost them against Cincinnati or West Virginia in a way that it ultimately costs them a game. And two, you hope they've got it figured out enough for Week Four when they host uh, North Carolina and Drake May at Acroshore Stadium. Now, who are the key guys? I said at the start, I put it on the thumbnail, I called this video, who are the three key players for Pitt's defenses this year? And, and I mean, three key players is, is uh, uh, a hokey, cliched, uh, gimmicky headline, clickbaity headline, three key players for Pitt's defense this year. I, I mean, the reality is they're going to need like 15 or 16 key players for this defense this season and possibly more. What I'm talking about today is three guys who... I think need to step up in a big way this year and it isn't necessarily the three most important players on defense because you'll notice I'm not going to mention Bengali Kamara and if you know me I never pass in an opportunity to talk about Bengali Kamara when discussing Pitt's defense I mean that's you know I, I was I was driving the Bengali Kamara hype train before I was driving the Bub Meads hype train I mean I've been, I've been on them with that one for a while but I'm not going to mention him because I think you know who he is, you know what's expected, and, and you know what he's capable of. And I, and I think there's a reasonable expectation for him, and I, I think it's reasonable for him to live up to that expectation. I sort of feel the same about Dayon Hayes, and I'm not going to include Dayon Hayes in this discussion either. Um, I, I feel the same way about Dayon Hayes, even though he has less experience and, and he's proven less than a guy like Kamara. I, I think I have a fair amount of confidence in him. Um, he has played a decent amount over the course of his career, and, and I think he's going to be pretty good. So I'm not going to include him. And the other guy I'm not going to include, uh, and, and there's a pattern here, and, and you'll see it really quickly, uh, or you know, pretty soon. The other guy I'm not going to include is Javon McIntyre. McIntyre you know, has played less than Kamara and less than Hayes, and he's stepping into a big role, which I just talked about is a very challenging role. It's one that you know, I, I think he learned some hard lessons in the Sun Bowl. Uh, Randy Bates and Pat Narduzzi have brought it up multiple times about some of the mistakes he made in the Sun Bowl and, and how it cost Pitt. Um, but he has played, and by all indications, from everything we've heard and told, he's been really good in camp, in training camp. You know, a big step forward, not just from the Sun Bowl, but a big step forward from spring camp that he has uh, – considerably improved in his understanding of the defense his knowledge and his you know the assignments and all the details and the things that you really need to master to be good at playing safety in this defense i have confidence in those three guys hayes kamara mcintyre what Pitt needs and three of the most important players in my view are the three guys playing opposite those three guys because of these three guys, like I think those three, I think Hayes, Kamara, and McIntyre will play well. But it'll be counteracted if these other three guys don't live up to it. So here's my three guys, and we'll work front to back. Defensive end, Nikai Johnson. I'm, I'm getting more and more convinced about Nikai Johnson, if not starting opposite day on Hayes, being the number three end in the rotation, getting a lot of snaps, playing a lot and making a big impact i personally uh, you know no disrespect to nate temple but i would love to see an all western pa starting defensive line you know because if you have hayes and johnson at end and you have devin danielson and david green uh you know at tackle you got it you know it's too bad down hayes couldn't have gone to like central catholic because then we could say an all whippeal defensive line um but we'll take an all western pa defensive line i think that'd be great that may or may not come to pass. I think Nate Temple has impressed the coaches and had a really good camp, so he could end up starting opposite day on Hayes. That's fine. Nikai Johnson's going to play a lot, and I think it's. I think he's going to take a big step this year. I think he's one of those guys who will benefit the most from John Morgan not coming back. You know, if John Morgan comes back and is welcome back, he plays a lot and gets a ton of snaps at, at defensive end and, and blocks further blocks guys like Johnson and, and Sam Okunlola and uh, Jimmy Scott. 
But Morgan didn't come back. He moved on. The coaches were, were willing to see him go because they're ready for that next wave. They're ready for Hayes and Johnson and Oak and Lola to step up and make a big impact. And I think Johnson is the one I'm looking at. I believe in Hayes. I think Dayon Hayes is going to play well. But I think Nikai Johnson, need, you can't just have one good pass rusher. I think Nikai Johnson needs to make a big impact so that other teams can't key on Dayon Hayes and that pass rush becomes that much more dangerous with two guys who are blasting off the edge. And we move to the middle of the defense. As you know, Bengali Kamara, I have my high expectations for him. I think he'll live up to it. Double digit tackles for loss, five or six sacks, interceptions, plural, um, forced fumbles, fumble recoveries, plural, defensive touchdowns, plural. Uh, but on the other side of him, Solomon DeShields. Solomon DeShields, I think, has to have a big year for Pitt this year. And it's not because they don't have other options. They do. If Solomon DeShields is playing really poorly and it's not working out, Shane Simon can move back outside to money linebacker. Brandon George can move inside, can, can play middle linebacker. And there you go. You got four like seniors, you know, four guys who are fourth or fifth year players and they're, you know, or sixth year player. And I, I think in the case of Simon, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they've got somebody to play. But with Kamara and DeShields at outside linebacker, and granted, the star and the money are two very different roles, but that could be, I think, maybe the most athletic set of linebackers Pitt has had under Pat Narduzzi. And I think when you take the athleticism those guys have, the explosiveness those guys have, the speed those guys have, you have a real chance to make plays. I asked Bengali Kamara yesterday, you know, during practice, uh, you know, throughout camp, the coaches track, you know, defensive players who force turnovers, usually either during seven on seven or, or full, you know, 11 on 11 team drills, maybe inside run as well. Um, and if you get one, you, you get a sticker across your helmet. It says takeaway and guys, you know, two, three stickers of takeaways on there. And I feel like this year we're seeing more linebackers with those takeaway stickers than any, you know, than in the spring or in previous training camps. And I could be wrong. I could be right. I might have to go back and look at my notes from previous years, but it seems like this year, the linebackers are really piling up the turnovers. They're making plays and it's not just Kamara. I don't even think the shields has one yet, but it's an athletic group of linebackers who are really hell bent on, on making plays and forcing turnovers and getting to the ball. And I think that's their best group is Kamara and the shields and Simon and given the importance, you know, the, the the pressure that's going to be on the linebackers this year as probably the best group, you know, on defense, the best position group on defense, I think you need to have your really athletic crew out there. You need to have Kamara and DeShields playing at a really high level. And that's no disrespect to Shane Simon or Brandon George, but I think their best lineup, you know, the, the, the best potential lineup, the lineup with the highest ceiling has Kamara and DeShields out there. I I'm very confident about what they're going to get out of Kamara. It has to happen with the shields. And then we move back to safety. I told you, I, I think Javon McIntyre is ready to go. I think he's ready to play at a high level this year. I think he's ready to be um, a very good safety. But they need someone else. And we talked to him this week, and it's P.J. O'Brien. I think P.J. O'Brien is, 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 I mean, maybe the most important player on defense this year. And, and you know, by the end of camp, it might not work out this way at all. He might be on the two deep. You know, he might be as a backup, and, and the starter will be Steph Hall, or Donovan McMillan will start next to Javon McIntyre. Javon McIntyre can play either spot. All right, He can play boundary safety, or he can play field safety. So if the best other safety, you know, if, if they have their two best safeties out of that group of McIntyre, O'Brien, McMillan, and Hall, uh, McIntyre is going to be one of the four best, one of the two best. All right. Whoever that other one is, if it's O'Brien, it's Hall, or it's McMillan, whatever they do best will dictate what position McIntyre plays. So if it's O'Brien and his best position is field safety, McIntyre will play the boundary safety. If it's McMillan and McMillan's best position is boundary safety, then McIntyre will play the field safety spot. If it's Steph Hall, then it'll just depend whichever one he's better at because I think he can play both just like McIntyre can play both. And they're all sort of getting trained at both positions. But I think McIntyre is kind of locked in. It's just a question of who can play next to him. And, and I feel like P.J. O'Brien, as an older player who's been around here longer than anybody else, um, other than McIntyre, I guess, I feel like P.J. O'Brien is the key guy. 
I think if he can step up and be solid and reliable and consistent at field safety, then McIntyre can play boundary safety, where I think he's a great fit. I think he can do both, but I think he's a really good fit for field, for boundary safety. Um, and that can be a good, solid group out there. But P.J. O'Brien's got to step up, and he's got to play well. Now, if it ends up being that Steph Hall wins the job, is one of the two best safeties, I, I'll, I'll buy that. I think Steph Hall is going to be really good. And I think McMillan, too. I think you will see more rotation among the safeties this year than you've seen in previous seasons. But your two main guys, I think, got to be McIntyre and O'Brien. I believe in McIntyre. Got to see it with O'Brien. He's one of the most important players on this defense because if McIntyre is going to do his job, O'Brien has to step into his role. So those are my three most important players on defense. I'm pretty sure we talked about nine or ten guys there, so covered a lot of ground. Uh, got all over the uh, defense. Um, just, uh, you know, it was a good way to just segue into a conversation about the defense after we talked so much about the offense yesterday. Excited for tomorrow. We've got the morning pit mailbag, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, if you want to get some questions in for the mailbag, go to the thread on the, on the premium message board, the Between Fifth and Forbes message board at pantholair.com. And uh, you can put your question in there. We'll get to as many as we can, and if we don't get it this week, we'll carry them over to next week, and we'll answer them then. So uh, go in there and, and drop your question, whatever it might be. Maybe one time we'll have a, a YouTube commenters mailbag, and I'll take questions from you guys here. But for now... That's, uh, that's reserved for our premium subscribers. So go to pantheler.com and check that out. All right, thanks for uh, watching the video today. We appreciate it. I hope you've had a great week so far. We're almost to the end of it. It's been a fun one for sure. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. So thanks for uh, checking these out. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in tomorrow for another Morning Pit right here. YouTube.com slash pantheler.com.